I'll show you how I varnish my art to protect it from UV rays and dust so that the colors last for many years to come. Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about varnishing your artwork. What I like to do, because I use water-soluble marks on my final piece, whether that's paper, um, wood piece, or canvas, which I don't have today, um, but I use the same process for any of these uh, substrates. So because I use like pencil, uh, I sign in pencil, I use a variety of different marks that are water soluble, then I need to protect those first. And I will include a link here for you on a video that I put together using all of my mark making tools and how they react to water. So uh, check out that video too. Okay, so a couple of different things, a um, couple of different options that I have here. One of them is um, the Krylon fixative, workable fixative. I've been using this for the last couple of years. I love it, uh, but one thing I don't love about it is that it smells very toxic, so it has to be done outside. Unfortunately, I'm in a place right now, um, my studio is in a professional building and it's very hard for me to take my artwork outside. So I tend to now take it home and varnish it at home. And I'll be showing you a video um, of me varnishing these two pieces in just a moment. But um, this one works great on um, pencil, pastel, chalk markings, uh, prevents smudging and wrinkling. Um, allows easy rework, um, acid-free, archival, safe. So um, I, I love this one. Now, if you are indoors, like I am here, and you cannot be spraying something that's toxic, this is a good alternative for you. So De, uh, Degas Fixative, and this one works as well. Um, soft pastels, oil pastels, chalk, uh, Conte, which I don't know what that is, colored pencil, graphite, charcoal, and then works on uh, paper, UPO, canvas, ceramic, fabric, glass, leather, wood, and stone. So this is a great alternative. And sometimes I will use this if I need to get something varnished quickly and I just don't have that time to you know, take it home and varnish it there. So I will use this. I'm gonna include a link in the description box below to my favorite art supplies where you can purchase them either on Amazon or on Blick and it includes uh, these two um, on Amazon for sure. Can't remember if I included them on Blick or not. But um, anyway, check those out. Those are two good um, options. If you have one that you absolutely love, put it in the comments below because in addition to me sharing with you what I have learned over the years. Um, it's great when you can share what you've learned because people read through those comments. So leave a comment down below. Love to hear what works for you. All right, so we're gonna take these outside, get them varnished, and then we'll come back in. are back and these are uh, protected and these two like you saw in the video I use the workable fixative outside and let these dry thoroughly and this does dry fairly quickly I think it's 15 minutes and um, something like that uh, so it's very quick you don't have to wait too long yeah 10 to 15 minutes um, handle after one hour or so all right so we're good to go and then let's talk about the different varnishes that we can use. I love to use uh, Liquitex varnish and again this is in my favorite art supplies if you want to check that out. This is the matte finish. I love using the matte for my large pieces. I've got one here. You can partly just see the bottom of it in the video. Nope you can't even see the bottom of it. Anyway I've got one up on my wall. So larger pieces I like to use the matte because 
it, the large pieces when it's hanging in a room I don't like it when there is a, a sheen on it where you've got you, you kind of have to look around you got to move your head around to really see the painting fully because of a reflection happening on it so that's why I like the mat I've been using that for years now another option is the satin so this one is not a flat and not a gloss right in between this one I used for years when I first started creating and it worked really great it does leave a little bit of a sheen to it so um, just be aware of that but I, I've used it before and I continue to use it all right one more I've got here is the gloss varnish I love using gloss on my smaller pieces just so because they're small and I really like them to pop a lot more so today I'm going to be using the gloss on this one and also on this one because it is a small piece what I consider a smaller piece so I'm going to be using the gloss on both of these today and the last one I want to talk about is you know I love my Nova color paints and so I got this matte varnish I love this matte varnish as well I think it works great it does leave a bit of a sheen on my artwork so if I'm looking for more of a although it says matte varnish it says um, satin finish um, satin finish acrylic mixing medium and final top court top coat um, interesting but yeah it does feel a little bit more like a satin than an actual true flat uh, so sometimes I'll use this as my first coat and then I'll come back in with the Liquitex matte varnish to really flatten it out even more all right so those are our options there and let me take a moment to get set up here and like I said we're going to be using the gloss today okay I like to keep my brush soaking in water I've heard people tell me that their bristles get really hard from using a varnish and I guess I never noticed that because I tend to just leave it in here all the time. I just add a little bit of water to it each time the water starts to run down. Of course, this is after I've washed it out. So I just leave it soaking at all times, but I don't leave it soaking up to here, just kind of like within here. All right, so I'll set that aside and I'm just gonna dry it off because I don't want it to be all watered down. I want the varnish to do its job. So I just, dry it as best as I can with a rag and for me working on whether it's small or large I have a tendency to like to just pour it directly on now with these you don't mix it with anything that's what I love about Liquitex varnishes you can use it straight out of the jar or out of the container but I like to mix it a little bit like this and I'm trying to be really careful because I don't want to get air bubbles in it I'm just going to gently do this because it does it does seem like it tends to oops settle down at the bottom <laughs> I guess it wasn't closed all the way all right well now I've got it leaking everywhere nice job Betty okay that's all right we're good to go I thought this was better sealed but I guess not all right so let me start with the larger one here and all I'm going to do is just pour it straight on just kind of judge how much I need the brush is fairly dry so when I first start the brush isn't very well saturated but by the time I get over here to the smaller piece I'm not going to need as much so let's do this and what I'm doing is I'm just simply going straight across like this I don't want to overwork it because you can dull your paints if you overwork it so I'm just going to go like this across I went over twice and that's good enough and now I'm going to do the sides and I've got some on my brush let's see if it's enough it's enough for this one side let me go to the next side so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to first of all wipe down this bottle a bit because I've got stuff all over it all right so I want to make sure you can see oh, I guess we're a little off camera hang on I'm going to but I do it right here I think you can see this and I'm just gonna pour a little bit on there and there we go 
Got that side done. And switch to the next side. And pour some on here. that okay so now I'm going to let's just switch sides with this and I'm going to set this down like this and what I want to do is just run it quickly like this all the way around uh, just to capture any that maybe got on the top part all right, now let's work on this one, which is already sticking to this. Let's move this over just a touch. And taking my bottle, I'm going to just squeeze some on. I don't want to put too much this time because I've already got some on my brush. And again, just going across like this, back and forth. And I'm not worried about anything smudging because I protected it. So I am good. Now I'm doing both sides, horizontal and vertical on this one, just because it's a smaller piece. And sometimes I'll hold it up like this to the light just to see if I caught all of it. And if there's anything that I missed, I can go back over like this edge I kind of missed. And that edge. All right. So again, I don't want to overwork it. This is good. I'm going to let this sit, let it dry. In the meantime, I will go wash this out and then I'll put it back in here um, so that it can just soak in here. And I'll come back and I'm going to do a second coat on each one of these so that it is thoroughly protected. All right, see you in a bit. I came back to the studio the next day so that I can get a second coat on here. I like to let these dry overnight, but usually it only takes about four hours is what it says on the bottle. So four hours or if you're like me, let it dry overnight. Added another layer to both of these and then I let them dry again for about four days this time. And the smaller piece I ended up putting under a mat and then inside of a cello sleeve and it sold at my local art festival or art show that I had. And then the larger one on wood I also sold and I wanted to make sure it had four days before I packaged it all up and had it ready to, to ship across the U.S. So it was important to me that it was thoroughly dry before any packaging materials were uh, put around it. So anyway, that's the way I like to varnish my art to protect it and to protect it from U UV rays and also to protect it from dust. All right. So thank you so, so much for watching. If you like the video and learned something new, please hit the like button. It really means a lot to me. And if you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button, but also hit the bell so that you're notified of future videos. I always love hearing from you. So if there are other products that you like to use, please share them in the comments down below. And last but not least, leave a comment if you need a link to my favorite art supplies. All right, folks, wishing you a wonderfully creative day. Take care.